Okay, fifth graders, we're going to try this again here. I did the entire lesson and it didn't record. I don't know why. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that and make sure things are going to continue to record here. So I'm going to go through this here pretty quick. So uh, we're, we are in 5-3, and um, in this particular example here, they're, they're saying Emily has a rectangular garden with an area of 360 square feet, and the length of her garden measures 20 feet. How many feet wide is her garden? So I'm going to draw uh, Emily's, Emily's garden here really quick. So this is, this is her garden, okay? And, um, and it's nice in the sense that they did give us some information here that we can use. And it's the 360 square feet, 360. Uh, you could write feet, FT squared. You could write 360 feet, SQ. It means the same thing, feet squared. Okay, when we're talking about an area, it's always squared feet. So, um, and they gave us one of the sides here, which is really nice. And if they've given us one of the sides, then we can easily figure out what the other side is. And one of the sides is 20. It's 20 feet. So 20 feet right there. So we need to find out this side here. Well, all you have to do is take 360 and you divide it by 20. How do you do that in long division? Well, does 20 go into 3? No, it does not. Does 20 go into 36? It certainly does. If you guys remember in division, you want to figure out how many times one number fits into another without going over. 20 goes into 36 just once, because if you did 20 twice, it'd be 40. That'd be more than 36, so that wouldn't work. What's left over? 16 is left over. You bring down the next number, which is a zero. 20 goes into um, 160 eight times. So that means this side is, um, is 18 feet. All right, because remember length times width, length times width equals area. And this is the area that gave us that. So whenever you have a problem where they are, where they give you the area and one of the sides, just divide that area by that side and you'll get the other side, okay? So you can look at the example they gave you here uh, for A, B, and C. Uh, I'm not going to go over that. Uh, again, sometimes I think these are just kind of confusing. It doesn't help any. So look at the convince me here. Um, I'm going to uh, use my, my highlights here since I already kind of, like I said, I did this already. So you're looking for the value of X. And so uh, what times uh, 12 um, equals 360? Well, that'd be 30. And then what times 12 equals 48? Well, that would be 4, and that's the number they're looking for. So, the, so I wrote down the value of x equals 4. So let's go to the next page, the, uh, the guided practice. And I'm going to check real quick to make sure this is still recording. Is this still recording? Yes, it's still recording. Good. So I went ahead and did these already, like I said, uh, and it stopped recording. And uh, So look, it says write the missing numbers to find 154 divided by 11. And so my question to you is, uh, if, if I put 110 in here and then uh, 44 in there, that's going to total 154. So then uh, what times 11 would equal 110? And that would be 10. And then what times 11 would equal 44? And then you'll have your answer there. And I went ahead and filled all this out for you down, down below. Talked about it, but I think you can see how it works. Number two, the same thing. Um, my, my question is what times 12 would equal 120? Well, that would go here. And then what times uh, 12 um, would equal 36? And again, that would go, that would go here. And so, uh, again, I filled out some of these to, for you here. Let's look at number three. Uh, I'm looking at number three right here. It's, and I, you can already see the answer there, but if you don't know how to do these division problems, then watch what I do here. 682. 600, I'm sorry, 620. Oh, no, it is 82. I just transposed the numbers here. Let's try that again. 
682 and it's being divided by 22. All right, so if you remember from division, what you guys do is you look at, uh, if it will go into the first number, it will not. Uh, 22 will not fit into six, but 22 will fit into 68. What times 22 is pretty close to 68 without going over. So 22 times three is, uh, is 66. So that's not greater than 68, so that works. And then you just subtract, there's two left over. Then you bring down the other number and that's 22. How many times does 22 go into 22? Well, it fits perfectly once with nothing left over. And you add that one in. And then you can see what I, what I did here. The answer is 31, which is, whoops, what we have right here. Okay. Um, number four. Let's look at number four together. Um, number four is 143 being divided by 11. Okay. So um, I guess my question would be, how many times does 11 fit into 14? It goes once, and so I'm going to put down the 11. I'm going to subtract it. There's three left over. Bring down the other three. How many times does 11 go into 33? It goes in three times, and there's nothing left over. So what's the answer? 13, and that's what I gave you there. So that's how you do these problems. If the modeling helps, then, then go ahead and use the modeling. Um, I want to make sure this is still recording here. Yep, it's still recording. Yay! I don't know why it was causing problems earlier. Um, you can see that I did a couple of these for you. Started to do them. 13, and then in here I put 130, and then 152, uh, because that adds up to 182. So the question would be, what times 13 equals 130? And then what times 13 equals 52? That's where those numbers would go. All right. Number 10, uh, I'll go ahead and do number 10 with you guys here. It's a 375, okay, being divided by 25. Well, how many times does 25 fit into 37 without going over? Well, only once. So we're gonna subtract that 25. I put a one up there. And then uh, let's see here, five from seven is two, two from three is one. And then we have to bring down the other five. Well, now we wanna know how many times 25 fits into 125. Well, that's pretty simple. 25 goes into 100 four times. But it's not 100, it's 125, so it's one more time, so it's 15. And then you can see that that's what I wrote there for number, number 10, because it would be 125. It goes in perfectly with nothing left over, all right? Okay, um, let's see here. Let's move down to the last page. And um, in number 12, I simply pointed out that... Um, uh, he's traveling 15 miles an hour and he's riding 210 miles. So that's going to be 210 divided by 15. You should be able to do that. And then for number 14, I talked about that. It says, how much longer is the distance from the library to the park to the train station and the distance from the library straight to the train station? Well, the first one I looked at was going from the library to the train station. The library to the train station is three point, that didn't come in very, using the dark blue to write doesn't work really well. From the library to the train station is 3.82 miles. And you're gonna be comparing that to, and I did it in red here, going from the library to the park, and then from the park to the train station. So from the library to the park is 2.14 miles. And from the park to the train station, whoops, hit the wrong button, backing up a page. I sure hope it's still recording. Let me see, is it? Yes, yay. From the um, park to the train station is, um, do I have the right color here? Yes, 
that's 2.96, 2.96. So you're going to add those up and then compare it to the 3.82 miles. All right. And then number 16, that's the last one I think I helped, helped you guys with. Explain how you can use the picture to show that 391 divided by 23 is 17. And uh, yeah, basically I did it for you. It's 391 divided by 23. So uh, you would ask yourself, well, what times 23 equals 230? What times 23, which is seven, equals, you know, 161. So um, uh, because 230 and 161 add up to 391. All right, that's it. I went kind of fast, faster than I did in the other one, just because I'm tired of repeating myself. Sometimes it just doesn't record properly, unfortunately. Anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow. That's it.